Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 83. Today we're headed into Sea Camp to finish our current delivery mission. And it looks like there's a nice new contract for us to take. A man strums a stringed instrument as you walk by. He slashes an ear-piercing cord, and you turn to find him laughing. Heh, <laughs> I thought that might fetch your attention. Grimold of Sea Camp said we should keep a lookout for a man of your... vocation. If you're looking for work, he's the man to go to. You ask if this figurehead pays well. The man nods. Yep, he gave me this here loot as payment once. Now I'm just waiting for the old devils to come down and challenge me to a tune. Grimold of Sea Camp said if you best one in a game of songs, then they'll give you a golden loot. Now that's what I call good payment, wouldn't you agree? The man turns back to the instrument, drawing a mewling note out from the strings. In the distance, dogs begin to howl. Grimald of Sea Camp is shaking when you greet him. He's practically frothing with anger. Or maybe he's just really drunk. Citizens of this fine town are starving. Why? Because brigands keep sneaking in during the night to raid the granaries. And if we catch them, they burn the buildings down. Now we can't defend ourselves by sitting back. Now, I want to defend myself by killing them all. The man teeters for a moment, as if about to spill himself across his desk. He steadies before continuing. I want you to go kill these vagrants, obviously. All you have to do is be interested and... <laughs> name your price. Okay, that's a decent amount of coin, and we're pretty much guaranteed to get a good fight out of this. The Ruins of Stormwatch Keep. Let's see where we're headed. Alright, it looks like it's actually pretty close by, but we're going to have to take the long way around. It'll take a day or two to get there, so we'll be right back. And we're back. We've made our way out to the ruins of Stormwatch Keep, and unfortunately, our scouting failed, so we don't really know what's waiting inside for us. We also spotted another pretty promising bandit stronghold on the way over here, the Mugger's Nest. There's an elite swordsman inside, so we might end up hitting it on the way back to sea camp, depending on how things go here. Let's head on in and see what's waiting for us. That's a lot of bandits. Okay, we're outnumbered 2 to 1, and obviously the terrain could be a lot better, but at least we're starting on relatively even footing. The big problem is going to be those crossbowmen. Our defenses are reduced by the swamp terrain, so they might end up landing some pretty nasty hits. Obviously, we're waiting for the bandits to come to us. Even with the Pathfinder perk, moving around in swamp terrain is pretty tiring. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Potato lands two solid shots, piercing a bandit's arm and puncturing another bandit's lung. Fox fires off two shots as well, piercing a crossbowman's side and crippling a spearman's arm. No signs of any elite bandits just yet. Mark cuts down a wounded crossbowman. Araton lands a glancing hit with a throwing axe. Belfontaine lands two glancing hits as well. Moving it around too. The bandit... Ooh. Okay, Potato just had his hand pierced. 
We'll definitely have him take cover in the tall grass, but we need to have him return fire first. Otherwise, I'll just end up exposing his position. There we go. Potato kills the bandit who injured him. Now he's got some extra action points to play with, so let's take another shot. No luck there. Let's get him under cover. There's a light hit on Araton. Nothing to worry about. Bunny puts an arrow through a crossbowman's shoulder, and there's the bandit leader. Espen the Outcast. He's got some decent equipment, but without a shield, we should be able to take him down pretty easily. Oh, wait. There's another bandit leader. Asgir the Scourge. He's going to be a bit tougher to take down. Okay, the bandit line is just one space away, so I think it's time to move up and engage. We really need to start thinning out their numbers. Roderick charges in, crippling a bandit's leg with his greatsword. Mark kills another crossbowman. Then takes the ear off a bandit bowman. Henry lands a glancing hit on one of the advancing bandits. Vlad cripples another bandit's leg with his billhook. Kazarin impales a bandit axeman through the hand. Reinhardt stabs a spearman through the shoulder. Belfontaine slices a bandit's artery. Then Araton quickly finishes him off before slicing another bandit's Achilles tendon. Yikes. And Araton puts the crippled bandit out of his misery. Henry takes a light hit. I got takes a light hit as well. I got takes another hit from a concealed pikeman. We'll need to be careful here. The bandits are starting to wrap around our northern flank. Fox cuts down the last enemy marksman. Then he lands a glancing hit on a swordsman as well. Potato emerges from hiding, shooting a bandit through the arm. Henry tears into the bandit that's threatening him, then quickly switches off to his dagger, stabbing it into the bandit's chest. I got brutally cuts down an enemy swordsman. Roderick takes a wild swing with his great sword, decapitating one of the bandits in front of him. 
Still facing off against multiple foes, he quickly readies his shield. Belfontan stabs a bandit in the leg, breaking the man's morale. Kazarin puts his dagger through another bandit's hand. Ariton lands a glancing hit on a bandit pikeman. Moving into round four. Espen the Outcast is facing off against Roderick. Oh, and we still have a crossbowman out there. Bunny puts an arrow in the crossbowman's side. Fox kills one of the bandits on our line, then puts two arrows into a pikeman, piercing his shoulder. Roderick takes a nasty hit from a long axe. Vlad cuts down a wounded bandit, then looks for another open target. We're still outnumbered, but we're doing a lot of morale damage. That's a good sign. Mark takes down the enemy crossbowman. Roderick readies his dagger and takes a moment to catch his breath. Ariton moves up, joining Roderick against one of the bandit leaders. Espen is already broken, but Ariton shows him no mercy, stabbing him through the shoulder. <laughs> Reinhardt stabs a bandit through the shoulder, breaking his morale. Moving into round five. Asgir yanks a wounded bandit out of combat, moving up to take his place against Reinhard. Bunny cuts down a bandit with a lucky shot. Then she mows down another bandit as well. Nicely done. Roderick flesh wounds Espen the Outcast. Henry cripples a bandit's hand, breaking its morale.
Fox shoots down a banded Axeman. Vlad shreds a broken bandit's chainmail with his bill hook. Mark is exhausted, so he takes a moment to catch his breath. In fact, we've got the advantage at this point, so let's just have all the raiders recover if they need it. Round six. Hmm. Reinhardt's shield just took a nasty hit. Belfontan takes down a bandit with a flurry of dagger strikes, then he moves up to join the fight against Asgir. Potato takes down a broken bandit, but now he's exhausted. Kazarin stabs a bandit in the leg and side, breaking his morale. Henry finishes off the badly wounded bandit, then turns his attention to another one. Ariton puts his dagger through Espen the Outcast's arm. Reinhard tears into Asgir, piercing the bandit leader's side and hand. Roderick finishes off Espen, then begins heading south to clear the rest of the line. Fox shoots a fleeing bandit through the hand, but he's too exhausted to take a second shot. I got stabs Asgir in the shoulder, breaking the bandit leader's morale. At this point, we've pretty much won the fight. It's just a matter of cleanup from here. I guess, technically, we still have three active bandits on the north, but they shouldn't pose much of a challenge. Let's see if we can take out that fleeing bandit before he gets too far away. Hmm. I guess no one can actually reach him. Oh, there we go. Fox takes out the fleeing bandit with a well-placed shot. Vlad cleaves open a bandit's artery with his bill hook.
Kazarin takes down another broken bandit on the south, then he moves to help Henry with the last one. I don't think we can do much else here, so cycling into round eight. Mark takes down the last bandit on the south, and the rest of the raiders start heading north. Vlad executes a profusely bleeding bandit. Belfontaine puts the bandit leader on death's door. Reinhardt finishes off Asgir, then takes a moment to catch his breath. Eriton stabs one of the remaining bandits through the arm. Moving into round nine, let's finish this. Bunny lands a glancing hit on one of the badly wounded bandits. <sighs> Reinhard kills one of the bandits, then stabs the other one through the hand. Vlad cuts one of the last bandit's arteries, sending blood spraying across the swamp muck. There we go. The bandit tries to flee, and Araton mercilessly cuts him down. Looks like that fight got us three level ups. Mark's hit level 14, Potato's hit level 14, and Roderick is hit level 14 as well. Not bad. It also looks like Mark and Fox are tied for MVP. As for the loot... Hmm. Well, nothing's really jumping out at me. There's definitely some valuable pieces in there, just nothing we'd actually use. Alright, I'll take a moment to pick out the best pieces of vendor trash, then we'll start heading back towards Sea Camp. Welcome back. We're currently headed back towards Sea Camp, but I thought we'd round out the episode by wiping out this bandit patrol. Now, obviously, these guys aren't going to stand much of a chance against us, but that's fine. We can always use some easy XP. Yeah. 
Washtech starts us off, taking down an enemy crossbowman and putting an arrow through another bandit's chest. Oh, and of course you'll notice Fox is wearing Roderick's hand-me-down. That's because we finally got Roderick equipped with a reinforced hauberk. Bunny puts an arrow through a crossbowman's chest. Alessandro takes down the wounded crossbowman, then lands a glancing hit on another bandit. Fox takes down a bandit with his first shot, then pierces a marksman's throat with his second, and he pierces another bandit's side with his third. Not bad. Rowan puts a crossbow bolt through a bandit's lung. The rest of the raiders are holding position, so moving into round two. Bunny finishes off two wounded bandits. Fox takes down a bandit with two quick shots, then puts a third shot through another bandit's arm. Washtech shoots the wounded bandit through the throat, then kills him with a follow-up shot then drops another bandit with a third arrow. Rowan shoots one of the advancing bandits through the knee. Then Alessandro finishes them off, before landing a glancing hit on another bandit. Kazarin stabs a spearman through the arm and shoulder, breaking his morale. The rest of the raiders rush forward, eager to join combat. Our archers don't have very good line of sight here, but we'll pick off shots where we can. Washtech lands a glancing hit. Woe takes out the last bandit on the south. Alessandro lands two hits, piercing a bandit's hand. Dominic moves up, breaking a bandit, before driving his dagger through the man's hand. Reinhard stabs a bandit through the arm, breaking his morale as well. Round 4. It should be over in just a moment. Washtech shoots a fleeing bandit through the neck. Rowan slices open a bandit's rib cage. Uh. 
Skeletor. Sir Skelebit cuts down the next shot bandit. Dominic executes one of the last three bandits, then starts moving along the line, killing another one as well. Reinhardt takes down the last bandit, bringing the battle to an end. No level ups this time, and it looks like Wajtek just barely edges out the rest of the archers for MVP. The loot's about as mediocre as you'd expect, but there are still a few items here that are worth taking. I'll handle the loot off screen, and we'll probably pick up here next time by taking down the Mugger's Nest. See you then. Hey, Retcon Raider here. Another day, another death-defying battle. It's nice to see that even this late in the campaign, we can still run into some pretty tough bandits. Granted, we still emerged victorious, but at least the bandits actually managed to put up a decent fight this time. It's also nice to see that we're still managing to pull a few last-minute level-ups before the final crisis begins. I know I've said it before, but it really does bear repeating. We're going to need every advantage we can get once the final event triggers. Next time, we'll probably head back to Sea Camp so we can sell off some loot, but then we'll almost certainly come back to raid the Mugger's Nest. Based on our scouting reports, that stronghold has another small army of bandits inside. Not only will that make for a particularly challenging fight, but with that many elite units, we'll have a much higher chance of finding a unique item. After that, we'll go right back to doing some more contract work. Once we've sold off the latest batch of loot, we should be about halfway finished with our latest ambition, but it's still going to take at least a few more three skull contracts to save up the rest of what we need. At any rate, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Battle Brothers, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, or the Fan Run Wiki. Links are in the description.